Bill Heard from Hackaday. Check this out. Today I'm sitting here in front of my uh, copy of Spice, which is a free uh, simulation software. And I have a sine wave. And I'm going to take this sine, wa sine wave and I'm going to sum it or mix it with some other sine waves. And I'm going to create a square wave. So uh, I've got my little schematic here. And this is what a sine wave looks like. And now I'm going to add a sine wave, a, another signal that is three times as high a frequency, which makes it the third harmonic. So let's see what happens. So here is a uh, one kilohertz wave shown. And now I'm going to show you what a three kilohertz wave. So again, three times the frequency. And if we run this simulation and then look at the output, we find that we're getting something that sort of looks like a square wave. So let's change him to be something nice and bright. All right, hopefully you can see that. And um, so now let's keep going. So here's the fundamental sine wave, the third harmonic, the fifth harmonic. And if we run this simulation and show just the output, it looks even a little bit square. So I'm going to continue to hook in other harmonics and we see as 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 we do it's getting square and square okay the reason I'm doing this is to uh, demonstrate that we can build other waveforms out of uh, sine waves after out of a combination of sine waves the reverse is true if we take a, a square wave we can break it back down into its constituent sine waves and and that's basically what a fast Fourier transform you'll see at FFT what they're talking about is a way to convert from the time domain, which is going across the signals, um, you know, like an oscilloscope does from left to right. And we convert it into something that shows the different frequencies as a sum of sine waves. Let's go over to the bench and see if we can uh, replicate what I've done here with my uh, spy simulation. Okay, over here on the bench, I've got a small circuit board that has a simultaneous triangle sine wave and square wave output. And uh, what I've done is I've also added a small circuit to adjust the symmetry or, or the purity, if you want to think of it that way, uh, of the sine wave. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, tap into the square wave and see if we can see the harmonics. For what we're looking at today, I'm going to be running a, my Tektronix digital scope uh, in an FFT mode to display frequencies, uh, the frequency domain. And I'm going to be using my regular scope to show you the waveform at the same time. So right now, uh, they are both set up to show the same square wave output. And uh, let's take a further look here. Down on the bottom here, we have our standard oscilloscope in the time domain, where the, the, uh, it moves from left to right to represent the signal. And we see our square wave. Here, you don't see a square wave. This is in a frequency domain, where the lowest frequency is on the left and the highest frequency is on the right. And this is being done mathematically inside the oscilloscope using an FFT transform, fast Fourier transform. And what it's trying to do is to break this signal down into uh, sine waves and show us the frequency in this direction and the amplitude. So if we look, we have a spike right here at 2 kilohertz. Well, that's the frequency of this. So again, 0 hertz is on the left, 2 kilohertz is here. And then if we look, and you see I have my cursor on it, we see a, another spike, and it's at 6 kilohertz. And so it's a 4 kilohertz difference. So uh, that's, that's what we call the third harmonic. It's not the second. That'd be a, a difference of, of 2 kilohertz, the, but the third harmonic's a difference of 4 kilohertz. Now we're going to do something I think is kind of cool. We're going to look at a sine wave doing the same thing using our fast Fourier transform. And... Um, the principle is that a sine wave doesn't have any harmonics if it's a pure sine wave. All right? And you may have heard of total harmonic distortion, THD, on amplifiers and such. And what they're talking about is all of the energy, all of the spray, all the noise that falls outside of just a sine wave. So if you have a sine wave and a little bit of distortion, there's some other energy in there distorting that sine wave, and we can display that on our uh, FFT-based equipment here. So I'm going to uh, show you a sine wave, and then I'm going to show you the harmonics from the sine wave. Here's a sorry excuse for a sine wave. You can see that it's kind of flattened on the top here. And again, if we, if here on the left is our lowest frequency, on our right our highest. 
Let's move our cursor down. Now, look, first off, see all the bottom stuff is gone, right? So we're working with just some spikes here that represent a few harmonics. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling them out so we can see them better. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put on the second spike. And it's a delta of 2 kilohertz. So, so it's a second harmonic, whereas before it was every 4 kilohertz, which was the even harmonics. This one is, is just the very next harmonic. And it goes bang, 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 bang. So we're close to a sine wave, um, but not quite there. So now I'm going to adjust this the symmetry of the sine wave while watching the, uh, the the readout here and let's see if we can make it a little better or a little worse let's you know see where it okay goes. I'm adjusting the sy symmetry of the sine wave and you can see up at the top that the harmonics are coming and going and changing and whatnot and if I were to adjust this just for one spike up at the top I would have a pretty pure sine wave this is about the best sine wave I could uh, get out of it here today. And uh, it's, it's, you know, there's noise and there's actually sampling clocks and things going on here. Uh, but here's the peak. And now I, what I've done is I put up a cursor and I'm showing that above this baseline um, that my fundamental harmonics about 48 dB. And if you remember dB are logarithmic, every, um, every 3 dB doubles the actual signal. So it, it adds up fast as it goes. Doot, 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 doot. Um, so let me distort the signal one last time and show you again this is a, a a sine wave with mostly a primary harmonic and some hangers on and then once we get in it, into it you can just see the harmonics just taking off and and again those those are what it takes to describe a uh, um, a distorted waveform so let me show you with the waveform together one last time here all right so again here is and okay sine wave but let's let's dirty it up and watch the harmonics so you can see that it's possible by uh if you could measure all of this energy right here um you you could tell how pure your sine wave is finally i want to uh um include some audio here and let you listen to what this sounds like um, here's what a sine wave sounds like and it's pretty plain there's no sharpness in it if we go to a square wave with its even harmonics you can hear that timbre I used to pronounce it when I was young timber um, it's it's all the harmonics that make up the sounds and give it its brightness and this is a triangle wave and it's not as sharp as the square wave was but it's got a different sound so in the early days of synths um, you would mimic you know the the reed of, of, a, of, a, that, of an instrument where the reed is going back and forth uh, you know you would start with a triangle wave or a square wave and, and then build on it with filters and such so I hope this made sense as far as uh, uh, being, ex being able to see the harmonics or see the frequency content of different shaped waveforms. And uh, this leads me to two different directions uh, that we're going to do in future videos here. And one is when we talk about a square wave, well, there's another thing there when you're doing high-speed uh, digital, and that's that rising edge, that falling edge. They have a characteristic all their own. Uh, I call it the bite right it's the radian frequency which is like the piece of frequency if it was going up real fast that's what that rising edge looks like there's a lot of energy in there and that gets into radios and uh, n you know nearby equipment and that's what FCC regulations are all about now I've got a lot of experience getting literally millions of pieces through uh, FCC or designing so that millions of pieces could go through and, and not create FCC fines right um, the other thing is if if I really can um, take sine waves and build other other things with them then uh, can I do that and the answer is yes we're going to talk about direct digital synthesis DDS here uh, on the next video and uh, see see what extreme we can take that to or, won't be extreme I don't have extreme stuff we'll see what interesting thing we can take it to so Bill Hurd from Hackaday uh, we'll catch you next time